With the release of Jujutsu Kaisen's trailer for Season 2, it's no surprise that Studio Mappa, as always, seems to have the spotlight on them. The trailer alone has hit 7 million views within just the first 5 days as of writing the script for this video, and the anime isn't scheduled to air until summer of this year. While this level of popularity for the second season is a win for Studio Mappa, it does sort of beg the question, what kind of controversy is going to inevitably come along with Season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen? You might understand what I mean by this since we're talking about Studio Mappa, but it simply isn't a coincidence that, at least within the last 4 years of anime, MAPPA has created this effect that seems to exclusively belong to them. This is the MAPPA effect. Before I go ahead and dive into what the MAPPA effect is, I wanted to thank you guys for the 24,000 views on my first video, and thanks for helping me reach 600 subs. <laughs> to describe Studio MAPPA as one of the most popular studios within the last few years of the anime industry would be going out of your way to state, well, at least one of the statements of all time. In fact, if you've watched anime at least to some degree within the last 2-3 years of seasonal releases, there's a very good chance that you know who this studio is and why everyone, no matter what time of year it is, seems to have their eyes on Studio MAPPA. But if you for some reason don't know who they are while claiming that you often watch anime, then there's a good chance that the place shown on screen is currently where you live. As of today, Studio MAPPA stands out as one of the most internationally recognized anime studios for a number of different factors, both good and bad. Their most notable achievement is that they've adapted some of the most popular manga stories into some of the biggest anime to come out within the last four years. You probably already know what shows I'm referring to, but in case you don't, here's the list. Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen, Vinland Saga, and of course, Attack on Titan's final season. These four shows have some of the biggest fan bases in modern day anime, which also happen to be brought into the care of Studio MAPPA themselves. With this in mind, it's a no brainer as to why Studio MAPPA MAPPA might as well be referred to as the most mainstream modern day anime studio, at least within America. I'm explicitly stating the words within America because Studio MAPPA can pretty much be described as the average American. Considering that they like to hop on literally any sort of trending material that they can find as a cash cow in both the literal money aspect and the figurative fanbase aspect. It's what they did with Chainsaw Man where not even 7 months after part 1 of the manga concluded, they uploaded a teaser trailer of them adapting Chainsaw Man into an anime. It's what they did with season 2 of Vinland Saga in order to save the anime from Wit Studio's internal resource drought or preventing them from working on it altogether, and it's what they did with Attack on Titan seeing as no other studio did take up the challenge of the gargantuan scale of adapting the remaining story of AOT even with all the production issues that were going to be present from the beginning. And then you have something like Jujutsu Kaisen, arguably the magnum opus of Studio MAPPA, which got so popular to the point it went from having 10 million copies of the manga in circulation during the same month of its first episode debut back in October of 2020, to having 70 million copies in circulation in August of 2022, occasionally having periods of time where the manga sold more copies than One Piece. It's from this point onward that Studio MAPPA's productivity in making hit shows left and right isn't without its consequences, repercussions, or even production value issues, but you probably already know that. You see, MAPPA are currently at a point of popularity where if they have any opportunities of making a new anime, they're going to use as many resources as they can to make sure that the anime they're making is going to be the best version of it possible, while also trying to have as little deficiency or limitations throughout the creation process. What this means is that for every big show they take in, they have to accept the risk of needing to maintain that show to a certain standard of quality so that people can and say, oh look, Studio MAPPA made that. And as a result of having that sort of identifiability, there can be two contradictory results. The first possible outcome is the result of Studio MAPPA being showered with the word peak within every Crunchyroll comment, with the second possible outcome resulting in MAPPA being described as every conceivable variant of the word dog shit. If they have to use something like CGI in order to reach a certain bar of quality within their shows, then they're probably going to use CGI. Or if you have to use CGI because you have to develop an anime within less than 9 months, then it's not really your fault at that point, you're just going to have to use CGI. Or if MAPPA just wants to make a show for the sake of having something to work on while also saving resources for something that may or may not have higher priority, then you get something like Hell's Paradise which suffers as a result of that. The MAPPA effect is something that MAPPA themselves can't seem to get rid of no matter what they do and it's understandable as to why. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and in the case of Studio MAPPA, for every one mainstream anime they produce, there are a minimum of two intrinsic controversies for that specific project. And this is something I've mainly noticed that has taken effect ever since the funny pandemic that has made everyone chronically online, possibly including you. I would say that the MAPPA effect initially started with the God of High School back when the pandemic was still fresh for just a few months back in July of 2020, which is right before the big mainstream hit that is Jujutsu Kaisen. The God of High School is a Korean manhwa and webtoon that Crunchyroll had gone out of their way to officially license as a Crunchyroll original anime, and it's arguably the beginning of the MAPPA effect as we know it today. The two major controversies that would be paired with this show would be for one, apparently if any sort of media has a label Crunchyroll, whether it's anime or even games, it's an immediate 
red flag to any fan base that sees that because it definitely isn't a coincidence that anything with the Crunchyroll label is being treated like fresh bat guama. The marketing for this show was incredibly strange at the time and I'm even surprised they went ahead and tried marketing this thing in the first place because the second point of controversy happens to be the fact that they went ahead and tried their hardest to speedrun this anime by jam packing a whopping 112 chapters in 12 episodes. Emphasis on the Crunchyroll original aspect, I guess. To put that into context for those that may not know, the amount of chapters that are adapted into 12 episodes of anime alone does vary differently from show to show based on a number of different factors. But arguably the most relevant one being how many pages are in each chapter, ranging from an average of around 24 to 36 chapters in 12 episodes of anime. MAPPA went ahead and adapted a story into an anime that by theory has over four times the pacing of what it should have originally had, culminating into an absolute mess in the storytelling, the pacing, and the entire anime as a whole. It also doesn't help that a bunch of the content up until chapter 112 of the webtoon had been cut out of the anime, which definitely contributes to the fact that the anime itself was objectively poorly handled. To summarize for God of High School, its two controversies are the fact that it belongs to Crunchyroll as a Crunchyroll original, and the fact that it was never going to succeed with the amount of speedrunning it did. Up next is Jujutsu Kaisen. This isn't specific to Season 1, but rather the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen from Season 2 and onward, considering that the first controversy I'll talk about can still be applicable even to this day. While there is the intrinsic problem of MAPPA's employees being underpaid and overworked, this isn't different to, well, a number of other anime studios. The thing that makes this controversy so different when it comes to this studio in particular particular is because of the fact that Studio Mapper are making it very clear that they're sinking their teeth in a lot more shows with no actual end in sight. The only real evidence you need of this is because it's currently 2023 and Mapper are going out of the way to release the second half of Vinland Saga Season 2, Attack on Titan the final season part 3... part 3 part 1 and part 3 part 2. Hell's Paradise, and early production for Chainsaw Man Season 2, which for some reason everyone is speculating to come out in fall of this year along with everything else. The second controversy is the fact that the original director for both Jujutsu Kaisen's first season and the movie, Sung Hoo Park, has permanently left MAPPA to go work on his own animation studio, potentially working with things like game engines, live performance shootings, and the usage of VR. The fact that he's pretty much gone from the studio does ultimately raise a concern about how the direction of Jujutsu Kaisen will be affected moving forward, and some fans are concerned about whether or not the direction of Season 2 will be affected in a similar way to how Chainsaw Man's direction was controversial on its own. So with Jujutsu Kaisen as a whole, it's the continuous discussion and concerns of their low pay to work ratio, which is probably a given at this point, and the fact that the original director of the show has left the studio altogether. Next on the list is Attack on Titan the final season, and this is a hefty topic to say the least. The change of studios from Wit Studio to MAPPA for the final season is going to be a controversy that will literally never go away for as long as Attack on Titan has any future relevancy. And with this change of production teams came a fair share of praise for MAPPA since they were doing what no other studio would taking Attack on Titan under their wing. But there also came an endless barrage of criticism and hate for Studio MAPPA at this time, as the controversy of their work environment being described as a factory slash sweatshop is one that many people won't forget even to this day. Along with the switch in production teams came the inevitable fact that there was always going to be some amount of change in the end result of what fans were going to be seeing throughout the final season. The art style is marginally different, as it no longer had the look from what studio that had been so recognizable for over six years. Instead, Studio MAPPA opted to design the future of Attack on Titan from this point onward to closely resemble the art style of the manga. And while I personally don't have a problem with this change, that doesn't change the fact that people were going to criticize this change in visuals for months at a time, regardless of the amount of effort that went into it. Many people also pointed out that the color palette and visual tone of the show had shifted from this show of vibrancy and visually pleasing presentation, to people making the point that the show visually had little to no contrast. This really long reddit post by user Squirrel8000 from two years ago dives into this problem very well, stating, The new season looks completely off, not even because of the CGI but because it's inconsistent with the colors we've had for three seasons. Everything looks washed out, flat, like log footage, so the CGI is more jarring and noticeable than it should be. The post doesn't bash or praise the show in any way, it's just valid criticism that actually had a level of thought behind it, unlike many of the other complaints behind season 4 that boiled down to brain rot and calling MAPPA the worst studio of all time. I've put on screen a comparison that's provided by the same user showcasing some scenes from the final season where they put in their own little edits to see how certain parts of the show could have looked with a little more contrast. And I see what they mean by it needing this kind of adjustment, as the show does have a bit of an issue when it comes to the visuals being paired with somewhat questionable color grading. With the direction and handling of these episodes in mind, the second major controversy that came along with the show's weekly releases of episodes was the usage of, you guessed it, CGI. 
While I don't actually have that much of an issue with the CGI being there in the first place, it is understandable that people will go ahead and complain about their favorite series originally having such an amazing level of quality in the most important moments, and for it to suddenly dip down in quality for what may seem like no reason at all in the eyes of the average consumer can obviously be, to say the least, somewhat confusing. But CGI wasn't just used because MAPPA decided to be lazy or that they didn't feel like putting in the effort of drawing Titans throughout the final season, they had to use CGI mostly because of the schedule they were given in order to push out the final season of Attack on Titan. I can't find a consistent answer as to how long the final season had been in development, but the most realistic answer based on what I've been finding is probably around 6 to 8 months. With this amount of time left for MAPPA to produce an anime like Attack on Titan, it's fairly obvious that CGI was going to be used regardless of what the viewers would have wanted. AOT Twitter was also just completely responsible for making the director of the final season to just completely deactivate their account. They didn't want to get bothered anymore and it was just that bad for them. I don't really care about the change in studios as they both brought incredible experiences of this show in their own ways. But it's crazy to think that for months on end, the community of Attack on Time was basically fighting itself with the trending tweet of hashtag thank you MAPPA for the fact that they went out of their way to bring the show's final season to a reality when no one else would. Attack on Titan is an incredible story and I hope to continue seeing Studio MAPPA go out of the way to consistently deliver a well-made finale for the conclusion of Attack on Titan. Even with the future controversies that will come with it, like the fact that an anime original ending probably isn't going to happen. Uh, just for the record, I know absolutely nothing about the ending other than that this conversation of an anime original ending actually exists. So to summarize Attack on Titan's controversies, there was a switching of animation studios which is still a lit candle of controversy to this day. And there was a usage of CGI throughout the animation which hasn't really been an issue for Attack on Titan ever since Season 2's Colossal Titan. You know what I'm talking about. Next up on the list is Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man has had so much controversy even to this day to the point where, while it isn't the majority, a decent sum of fans within the Chainsaw Man community are upset with the direction that Chainsaw Man has taken for Season 1. Chainsaw Man's director for Season 1, Ryu Nakayama, has sparked so much conflict within the Chainsaw Man community, particularly within the western side of the community, aka Japan, because of the fact that the adaptation of Chainsaw Man had gone for a much more realistic and cinematic approach than what many people in the western side of the world would have preferred it to be. And honestly, I do understand what they are talking about since I did read the entirety of part 1 of the manga before the anime was announced, and there are a few moments here and there throughout Chainsaw Man that definitely could have been portrayed differently to try and be more similar and in tone to how the manga was. But overall I am still satisfied with the end result. Although because of this controversy, there are now fresh rumors going around that Ryu Nakayama isn't going to be the director of season 2 and I can definitely understand why. Realistically, fans of Chainsaw Man before watching episode 1 were expecting MAPPA to match the fast paced storytelling and the expressive character interactions in later episodes. But of course, this isn't the case because Ryu Nakayama himself stated that he wanted the anime to be more realistic and cinematic and ultimately wanted to deliver an experience that was able to stand out from other shonen media. Japan wasn't happy with this at all to the point where we're now at a crossroads where it is basically confirmed at this point that Ryu Nakayama won't be returning for season 2 of Chainsaw Man. The second controversy that had been an issue from the first episode was again the fact that there was the usage of CGI during certain fight scenes which caused many people to have quality concerns of the season moving forward. Because of this end result with Chainsaw Man, the CEO of MAPPA did state that their 100% financial and individual investment into Chainsaw Man was considered a financial success, which it most definitely was considering the current status of my bank account. For those of you that don't know what it means when someone like MAPPA decides to do a 100% investment into Chainsaw Man, I don't mean figuratively as though they decided to go all out for their studio to do the best they could. I mean in the literal aspect that MAPPA fully funded this anime on its own which isn't typical for the average studio. From what I understand, the amount of money split up after the revenue comes in is divided up based on the amount of companies that are investing into that specific project. But I think anyone with two brain cells can also agree on the fact that Chainsaw Man's anime in particular hasn't had the same cultural effect as something like Jujutsu Kaisen, which is a complete that the CEO himself did have even with the studio's financial success. Which probably has to do with the fact that many people weren't satisfied to see CGI in its first episode paired with the fact that the episode probably would have had much better reception if it went ahead and took the Oshinoko route of being a literal movie. Chainsaw Man is incredibly interesting as a story for its unique pacing, art direction, and how the characters interact with each other, and everyone expected for it to be something similar in scale to Attack on Titan in terms of cultural impact, especially when you consider the fact that Chainsaw Man as a manga was relatively new at the time. Even with all of this information in mind, it ended up getting a lower overall review score than both Spy Family and Bochi the Rock, which are both great shows by the way, go fucking watch them. To conclude Chainsaw Man's segment of the video, the show had major controversies regarding the director himself not following fan expectations, and the first impressions of the show weren't anything spectacular because of both the CGI and the cinematic approach that's seen as early as the first episode.
House Paradise is MAPPA's anime of the season, and it might be the show you've been waiting for me to talk about, but don't worry, I've held you for long enough. House Paradise is another show that falls under the MAPPA effect, but it's for much more simple reasons than you might actually think. The first controversy of House Paradise is the fact that as a part of the dark trio of manga, consisting of itself, Chainsaw Man, and Jujutsu Kaisen, it doesn't feel like it's having nearly the same level of effort and care put into the anime, at least when compared to its counterparts. Visually, the show can be incredible with some scenes being flat out eye candy. The main characters are interesting, the side characters are thought out just enough so that it feels like they all have enough importance for their own time to shine, and the female characters are, uh, also great. But the problem with Hell's Paradise is that you can pretty much tell how much effort MAPPA put into this show when you give it a direct comparison to the other two shows that I just mentioned. To put it into perspective, here's a really great fight scene that pops up as early as the beginning of episode 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen. And here's a small clip of episode 9's fight scene, which is literally the best fight scene we've gotten out of this entire show. I can't show them or else I'll get in trouble, sorry. The point I'm trying to make here is that yes, both of these fight scenes are great when it's in its own little bubble. But when you consider the fact that Hell's Paradise is supposed to be a part of the Dark Trio, it immediately feels like a letdown because it shouldn't have taken 9 episodes for me to give a fair comparison between two fight scenes. From the exact same studio. And it's almost clear at this point that MAP is probably holding off some level of resources for the sake of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Along with this comes the second controversy that people are accusing Yuji Kaku, the author of Hell's Paradise, for blatant plagiarism in the designs of the monsters throughout the island of Hell's Paradise, even though the original serialization for Jigo Kuraku predates that of Chainsaw Man by roughly 11 months. Bonus controversy! <laughs> With the delay of episode 9 for Hell's Paradise, there's the inevitable discussion behind potential production issues backed up by the fact that the episodes we have seen haven't necessarily been anything captivating throughout the story. The actual reason as to why episode 9 was delayed in the first place was because of... the World Table Tennis Championship. It simply overlapped with the release of this episode, which meant that episode 9 was going to be delayed regardless of what anyone would have wanted. With everything I've said throughout this video, it's very clear that the MAPPA effect, in theory, does exist. The idea that for every one mainstream show that MAPPA seems to produce, there's always two intrinsic controversies, even if it may vary for each mainstream project that MAPPA decides to produce. And with the current state of MAPPA and how they're handling their own projects, it doesn't seem like it's going to go away for the foreseeable future, even when the topic at hand is something negative. But no matter what I might have to say, MAPPA does produce some of the best shows out there. I'd like to know what you guys think about the MAPPA effect and whether or not everything I've been saying here is simply by pure coincidence or if the MAPPA effect genuinely has substance behind it as a concept. This video has dragged on for way too long, so to finally conclude, give me any criticisms or comments down below, tell me what I messed up on or missed out on, and thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, sub, peace.